Hello everybody, it's Bacon Donut here, back with another Sky Factory tutorial. Yes! Sky Factory is a mod pack that I made, and uh, if you want to know more about it or how to get it, go back and watch episode one, and you'll learn all about that. We are now in part three of our Dartcraft series. Dartcraft is an essential part of Sky Factory, and uh, we have now unlocked tier one and tier two, and we're about to start into the tier three of enchantments for Dartcraft. Uh, so, okay, so it's pretty obvious that this one is a, is a cobweb and that was it, that one is an arrow. You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> right, of course we will. And of course, this one's already revealed because it's a crafting table. That means it's an optional enchant. You don't have to do that one in order to uh, complete the tier. And this one is one that you're not gonna know probably if you don't already know Stuff, something about Darkcraft, it's glass powder, and I will show you how to get that in a bit. Let's start with the other two first, though. So over here to our stuff, we have cobwebs, and we have arrows, and uh, I'm gonna pop into creative, so the enchanting is faster. So first, let's take the pickaxe and put a cobweb on it. Hit go, boom, silk touch. Fairly simple, cobwebs, equals silk touch. So now if you have a plain old piece of glass and uh, break it, boom, you get the glass back because silk touch. And so you might be asking, how do you get a cobweb? But anytime you want to know how to get something, click on it in any eye and get the recipe, right? So I click on that. It's four string and a slime ball. The string should be easy to get. The very beginning of this tutorial series shows you how to get lots and lots of string. That just leaves slime ball. Well, if you may have run into some slime uh, in, in your exploits, depending on how you built your world. If not, you most definitely have uh, choo-choos by now in your mob farm. And the choo-choos drop the, this stuff, the choo-choo jelly. And uh, all and again, you can see this in any eye. If you click the slime ball, there's a recipe for the slime ball. Choo choo jelly turns into slime. So just take one of those from your mob farm. Boom, you've got slime balls, and now you can craft the cobweb. Boom. And uh, all right, so now next up is this arrow, and the arrow is actually uh, something that you put on weapons. So let's put a sword in there, and the arrow. Hit go. Oh, I'm not a creative. I keep doing that. It takes so long. Okay, there we go. Bleeding. We have a bleeding enchant on our sword. Interesting. So for demonstration purposes, I have myself a little trap here with a Pikmin. Doesn't, I mean, obviously I made this in creative. You're not going to have a random Pikmin standing around, but this is just to show you what bleeding does. Let's hit him. Boom. He is back to half our life. But watch, do you see? Oh, it only lasts for a short, certain amount. Let me, let's do this again. There, did you see it? Okay, it might not have been clear, but it did work. I hit him and that did some damage. And then he actually took damage twice after that. He took one heart and that left him, I took a couple hearts off. Then he took another damage and was down to half a heart and then he died, and that was all without me hitting him, except for that first time. So, should be pretty obvious. Bleeding is damage over time. If you're a World of Warcraft it, person, then you recognize the term dot. It puts a dot on them. Damage over time, and the monsters will, you can attack them and step back, and they'll, uh, their health will lower without you doing anything additional. So there you go. Man, I hate the snow. That's obnoxious. Uh, okay, so, that takes care of both of these, the cobweb and the arrow. That leads us to the glass powder. This one is, it's pretty cool and it's kind of different. So it's gonna take some explaining here. So glass powder, which uh, I have the, the thing that we need to start with right here is the fourth flask. There's more than one way to get glass powder, okay? So the, the difficult way, the way that this hint is trying to get you to do, it says, some sort of dust left behind by a flask-wielding lunatic. Okay, so let me show you what that's talking about first. 
Uh, let's get back into survival. I've got the force flask. So the recipe force flask is pretty simple. Just one little force nugget and three pieces of glass and you get three of the bottles. So that's pretty cool. These bottles are neat and I cannot handle the snow. Let's turn on that and toggle down ball. There we go. Um, so we take this flask and go over to our animal farm here. I'm gonna right click on an animal. Oh, wait, that gave me milk. Wait, that's not what I meant to do. How about a sheep? Ah, shift. I, I shift right clicked. And that actually threw the bottle and now we have a bottled sheep. <laughs> you with me so far? So if, uh, if you're not quite clear, let me show you again, force flask. You can do this from a distance, so check this out. I'm gonna stand back from an animal this time and I'm just gonna shift right click. Boom, it threw the bottle. When it hit the sheep, it bottled up the sheep and then magnet mode brought it to me. And so then you can go wherever you want and right click and it puts the, whatever is inside of it, it puts it back down. Pretty cool. And you can do that with any of these animals and also with any of the monsters. There's a catch though. Uh, and there's no mobs alive there for me to, to show you, but you can't bottle monsters until they are at one HP. They have to be almost dead before you can bottle them. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Now the problem, the, the next problem is, uh, what this thing is, wanting you to do if you're looking at the hint it says flask wielding lunatic if you bottle a creeper the creeper will explode so first you have to get the creeper down to one hp and then you have to bottle it and then it explodes in your face and that drops the dust that you need for this enchantment Okay, that's a bit crazy. Not only is it crazy, it's pretty difficult to pull off in a sky factory world. It's hard enough in a normal overworld. When you're in a void like this, how are you gonna get a creeper, get it down to one life and not like, if you do that in your mob farm, then you're probably gonna blow a hole in your mob farm. That's not good or good for your health. So I'm gonna show you a different way. And uh, it's just related to the dark craft stuff. Okay, so, um, I showed you before, in the previous episode, I showed you how to make an XP tome. Right here, this experience tome. So let's, uh, I've got 12 levels, that'll be enough to demonstrate. So, so I'm gonna shift right click to put these levels onto the book. And uh, there's 204 XP on the book. So let's grab our force rod, which is in here. Force rod, and we're gonna force rod the tome. And it's going to give us two upgrade cores. And I'm going to show you what these are in a second. Really cool item. So uh, there's a correlation here. There's 204 experience. We're getting two upgrade cores. If I had 400 experience, we'd get four cores, etc. So every 100 XP equals one upgrade core. More XP you get, more cores you get. So there you go. So let's go ahead and complete the craft. Boom, that gets us some upgrade cores. And what you do with these things is you actually use them, uh, you enchant them and uh, put effects on them. And then, but then what do you do with them? Okay, this is all gonna come clear, I promise. You can see right here, I've got some a stack of upgrade cords next to a white force furnace. That's right, Darkcraft has its own furnace. So let me show this to you. I wanna just put this right here and let's look up the recipe force furnace real easy to make traditional furnace two pieces of iron and three force ingots makes a force furnace and with any of these you can just craft it with a piece of dye to color it so it, it accepts any of the standard minecraft colors if you feel like color coded furnaces you can do that by default it's white used to be yellow in previous versions um all right so there's the the furnace now some Things to know about the furnace. First of all is that the furnace does not waste fuel if it's not burning something. So 
if uh, in a vanilla furnace, if you cook something and there's still fuel left in the in the middle here, but there's nothing left to cook, the fuel is just going to continue to drop and and get completely wasted. In a force furnace, if you cook something and there's fuel left over, it freezes in place and just waits uh, until. In, until there's something else to cook. So that's pretty cool. And it goes twice as fast as a normal furnace, the standard vanilla furnace. So it's faster, it's more efficient on fuel, and we can upgrade it and do awesome things with it. Let me grab a chest. Um, I've, got, I've got a chest here. The way, another great feature of this thing is that when it cooks stuff, it's going to automatically, when it's cooked, dump the result of the cook into it it tries to look for an adjacent inventory and empty it into that so let me show you here there, here's some force logs i'm gonna put some force logs in there and force logs can also be used as a fuel so i'm gonna put some right there and it's cooking and when it's done cooking boom made a golden power source so it's just like making charcoal in with vanilla logs but um it's the dark craft version of the golden power source it acts exactly like charcoal except it gives you more fuel and you can make force furnace uh, force torches with them which uh, provide more light and have features that you can add to them as well so there you go and you can see we're out of fuel the progress here is saved too so if I put that in there, boom, boom, there it goes. It's cooking nice and fast. And if I were to take this out, the fuel level there is frozen in place. So there you go. And the results of the cooking is put over here. But we're not done yet. There's more. Okay, remember that XP tome that we had. Uh, let's just, I'm just gonna grab one quick. If you, in, so this tome, we have a new XP tome, it's got zero. Well, remember, vanilla furnaces generate XP for you. If you cook something and then pull it out of the furnace, it gives you XP. Well, what about with the force furnace? The force furnace actually stores all that XP in internally until you give it a place to put it. So if we put this XP tome in here and then start cooking things, it's going to generate that experience and it's going to automatically put that experience onto the book. Look at that. 14 XP, 16 XP. So, and what you're cooking will determine how much XP. So in this case, it's two experience points for each of these logs cooked. Pretty cool. Now, right here, there's this little design thing over here. That is the upgrade cores. So check this out. Okay, so let's get an enchanting material. And uh, what's uh, what are we up to here? Ah, that's right. We're still working on that. Yeah. So the, this is the other way to get that glass powder instead of dealing with creepers is by grinding up these animal bottles. And let me show you how that's done. We're going to take a piece of flint. And we're gonna put an upgrade core in here with a flint and hit go. And I should have been in creative. Every freaking time I do that, this is gonna make a grinding core. You can also do this with sugar to get a speed core. The speed core would make the furnace cook stuff faster. You can put, um, you can even put an, a bottle of enchanting on here like this and like that. Right, and this would get us an, an XP core, and the XP core makes it so that this thing generates more experience. Technically, we have now created an XP farm. That's really all you need. That is an XP farm. So there's a challenge about creating three different types of XP farms. This counts as one of them. We're automatically putting uh, XP on here. And uh, a mob farm where you can come over here and kill monsters and get levels, That that's, an XP farm too. We're technically two out of three on that one. So even in the midst of learning Darkcraft, we're still working toward completing challenges. All right, so we've got this upgrade core. It's right here. Core of grinding, now that we put flint, I'm gonna put this right here, boom. And I don't even know what that's gonna to do to force logs. What is this gonna do? 
Oh, it gives us planks. Interesting. I didn't even know that. So normally if you take a, a, a force log and put it in your thing right there, you get four planks. Well, if you use the grinding core, you get six instead of four. I didn't even know that. But the point is we have this bottled sheep here. You can actually put this in here like so, and it's going to grind up the sheep. Yeah, it's gonna grind up the sheep. And let's see what kind of luck we have on the results here. Oh, we didn't get it. But we got two sheep chunks. Uh, you can look that, those up in Antii to, to see what all they're used in. It's other Darkcraft stuff that we're not gonna talk about today. But the thing that you need to know is that if you grind up the animal bottles, there is a percentage chance of dropping glass powder from it. We didn't get one that time, but all we would have to do is, you know, you keep breeding the animals, bottling them up, go into this grinder, grinding the animals, and then after a couple of times, it's it's not too rare. Like, you should get it pretty quick. Three or four bottles should be enough. And uh, in addition to the animal chunk, you will get a piece of glass powder. And uh, I'm just going to grab that quick glass powder right here that's what it looks like by default and that process way easier in my opinion than chasing after creepers and explosions and stuff so then there's a matter of what to do with the stuff so this is an upgrade for a sword before we put an arrow on a sword to get bleeding uh this is an interesting companion to to bleeding uh so glass powder on a sword we hit go. We have an enchantment called false. False. Let's go see what that does. Uh, pigmen. Let's get our let's get our test pigmen back. Um, put that guy there, and let me get into survival. And this is the sword with false. All right, let's look at his health. He's full health. Few hearts. Boom. Did you hear that noise? Hear that? When I hit him, wow, he hits hard. When I hit him, it's making a little noise and he's not dying. He's sitting there at half a heart and Wayla's not being nice and showing it to us anymore. Anyway, the, the whole point of the false enchantment is that you cannot kill monsters with it. Remember, in order to bottle a monster, it has to be at, at one HP. This guy is now at one HP, so I can throw a bottle at him and I can and bottle them up otherwise it wouldn't have let me do that it has to be passive animals uh if you want to bottom bottle them any old time so this false enchantment is designed to help you do that uh but you have to go do it the hard way the first time in order to get the glass and get the enchantment so having done that we have now completed that entire tier we're now at tier four and we've unlocked a whole new list um there's this golden power powder, which I just showed you how to get a second ago, and uh, these other couple too. And here's another op uh, optional one. So we're gonna cover that in the next episode. How to do that tier? I'm also in, and in the next episode, also I'm going to show you how to do this crafting table one and how to do this furnace one. We're gonna cover those both together next time. Thank you for watching. If you like this at all, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bacon underscore donut, broadcasting Minecraft live almost daily. Follow me on Twitter and I will catch you next time, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.